Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to another episode of Carnivore Kitchen. Steven here with Team Fork and today we're going to be taste testing five different strip loin steaks that have been dry brined for different lengths of time. So if you would like to see what's the best amount of time to dry brine your steak, stay tuned. Last week I ended up showing you guys how to dry brine a steak and we ended up doing five different durations of time. We did a 24 hour, 48 hour, 72, 96 and 120 hour dry brine. So one, two, three, four and five days. And today we're going to be taste testing each of them to determine what exactly is the best length like of time to dry brine your steak. So let's go ahead and get on with the taste test. This is the 24 hour dry brine steak and as you can see, it still maintained its red color and is still quite tender to the touch. Because of the thickness of the steak, the salt will have absorbed into the more superficial layers of the steak, but it may not penetrate all the way through and won't penetrate the fat. Now, all that's left to do is cook it using your preferred cooking method. And it's time to try out the 24 hour brine, perfectly cooked, medium rare, 135 degrees. Let's just go ahead and try it out. This is about as close to a perfect steak as you can get. Still very, very juicy, very, very tender. 24 hours is a great amount of time if you're going to be doing a dry brine. Well, let's see if the 48 hour dry brine can beat this one. This is the 48 hour dry brine steak and as you can see, it still maintained its red color and is still quite tender to the touch. However, it's a little darker and a little less tender than the 24 hour dry brine steak. Because it had an additional 24 hours to let the salt absorb, the salt will have absorbed deeper into the meat than the 24 hour dry brine steak and will penetrate some of the fat. Now, all that's left to do is to cook it using your preferred cooking method. All right, so it's time to taste this, the two day brine right over here. Without even eating it yet, it already looks a little bit juicier and it does feel pretty tender. Let's just go ahead and give a little bit of a test. It's definitely juicier than the first one, however, the one that uh, the uh, that I ended up doing for 24 hours was 135 degrees. This one, it's 130, so it could have been that, but yeah, so far this one is a lot juicier. And overall, I am preferring the two-day brine as opposed to the one-day dry brine. Very, very tender. Can't wait to try the 72 hour dry brine. This is the 72 hour dry brine steak. And as you can see, it's starting to lose its red color and get even darker and less tender to the touch. Because it's had an additional 24 hours to let the salt absorb, the salt will have now fully absorbed into the deepest layers of the meat than the 48 hour dry brine steak and will fully penetrate the fat. Now, all that's left to do is cook it using your preferred cooking method. Next up, we have the 72 hour dry brine, and this is normally the length of time that I do when I do my dry brine, so I already know it's gonna taste really, really good, but let's just go ahead and give it a try. Very juicy, very tender. Personally, this is the length of time that I like, the 72 hours. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and try the 96 and 120. And those ones I've never tried before. The longest I've ever done is a 72 hour dry brine. So let's go ahead and see what the 96 hour tastes like. This is the 96 hour dry brine steak. And as you can see, the longer we leave the steak to brine, the darker and less tender it to the touch it becomes. Because the salt has already been fully absorbed into the deepest layers of the meat with the 72 hour dry brine, the only difference between the 72 hour and the 96 hour steak will be the texture and juiciness of the steak. Now, all that's left to do is cook it using your preferred cooking method. Okay, so this is the 96 hour dry brine and without even going into it right now, I can already tell just from looking at it that it does look a little bit more dry. So if you do prefer a more moist steak, then you probably would want to opt for either 48 or 72, but let's just go ahead and give it a taste test. Very tender. Tender, but not quite as juicy as the 48 or the 72. Once again, this one has also been cooked to 130 degrees, so medium rare, just the way I like it. And so far of the four that I've tried, I think the 48 hour is the best one. The 72 at first tasted better than the 48, but once I got closer to the center, the 48 hour one was a lot juicier. So I think 48 for right now is the winner. Anyway, let's go ahead and try out the 120 hour dry brine. Lastly, this is the 120 hour dry brine steak. And as you can see, it's very dark and very hard to the touch. If I were to throw this at a car window, I'm fairly confident I would be able to break it. If you prefer the taste of roast to a steak, then this is the only time I would recommend doing a 120 hour dry brine. Now, all that's left to do is to cook it using your preferred cooking method. Alright, so this should be interesting. This is the 120 hour dry brine, so it's been sitting in the fridge for 5 days, and just from looking at it, it does look a lot drier than the last one. But let's go ahead and give it a taste test. 
It's still really tender and really, really tasty. However, it is a lot drier. And as with all the other ones, with the exception of the first one, cooked to 130 degrees, medium rare, just the way I like it. So this is really going to come down to personal preference. If you prefer your steaks more juicy, then the 24 or 48 hour is going to be ideal. If you prefer it more tender, then you can go for the 72 or even the 96. Me personally, of all the ones that I did, I think the 48 hour was my favorite one. So for me personally, the next time that I do a dry brine, I'm going to go for a 48 hour. I was doing 72 in the past, but after comparing them side by side, the 48 is definitely the best one for me personally. But yeah, that was the dry brine experiment. I'm going to leave you guys now so I can go ahead and finish this steak. And then next week, since it's getting really, really cold, I live in Canada, February, it's freezing, so you can't exactly go out and use the charcoal barbecue. So next week, I'm going to be showing you guys how to sous vide a steak. So be out on the lookout for that. Take care, everybody.